Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. So, yeah, we have enough people, I think. Let's go ahead and get into it. It's recorded it. now, so not like we really have Yeah. To... So, yeah, we'll post this on probably either a new YouTube or my personal YouTube later. Um, so, we are going to start you guys off with some Japanese monster legends. Japanese monsters are called yokai. Yeah, you guys should be able to see it, right? There. Mm -hmm. okay, I'll yeah, it should be up to date. Yeah. So, we're going to start with some yokai. Um, so, there's lots of yokai legends, but to be a yokai is not necessarily to be evil. A monster makes it sound like it's evil, but they are just sort of little uh, spirity supernatural guys it can be tricksters though but that mm. doesn't mean they're like bad it's almost like a little kid kind of trickster where it's like mm. innocently intended they're just being little goofballs but yeah. then some accidentally kill you while they're being tricksters that's so, true um yeah and some are purposefully evil some of them oh, yeah. will intentionally kill you so but it's just not inherently evil because you hear the word monster sounds evil so we will start off with one called Mijina, the Faceless Woman. Can you all see her? Yeah, so she is a very famous story. So I'll let Stephanie introduce her while I bring up the original story. She's from a very, very old tale. She first originates within a story about a man who's he's getting drunk and he's walking along a road and he sees a lady weeping. Um, and he walks up to her and he's like, hey, what's wrong? And she turns and she has no face. And it's just kind of, she just, she meets you while she, you're wandering. And she's yeah. always crying and lost. And then when she looks at you, she has no face. Yeah. I don't think she actually can hurt you, though. I think she just, I well, think she just scares you. <laughs> let's, let's read the original tale from, this is from Hearn's Kwaidan, a classic book of Japanese ghost stories. But it's very short. So yeah, it's just, it's just a few paragraphs. On the Akasaka Road in Tokyo, there's a slope called Kino Kinizaka, which means the slope of the province of Ki. I do not know why it is called this. On one side of the slope, you see an ancient moat, deep and very wide, with high green banks rising up to some places of gardens. On the other side of the road, it extends down long and lofty walls of an imperial palace. Before street lamps and rickshaws became commonplace, this neighborhood was very lonely after dark, and belated pedestrians would go miles out of their way to avoid it after sunset. It said that a Mujina, a faceless woman, roamed freely there. The last man who saw the Mujina was an old merchant of the Kyobashi Quarter. This is his story. One night, at a late hour, he was hurrying up to Kino Kunizaka when he saw a woman crouching by the moat all alone. She was weeping bitterly, and her hands covered her face completely as she heaved forward towards the moat. Fearing that she intended to drown herself, he stopped near her to offer his help. As he came closer, he saw that she was lithe, handsomely dressed, and that her hair was arranged like that of a young girl from a good family. He was a kind man, and pity gripped his heart. Old Jolchu, young girl, he exclaimed, approaching her. Old Jolchu, do not cry like that. Tell me what the trouble is, and if there's any way to be of help for you, I shall do it. But she continued to weep, hiding her face from him with one of her long sleeves. Old Jolchu, he said again, as gently as he could, please listen to me. This is no place for a young lady at night. Do not cry, I beg of you. Only tell me how I may help to you, and I will. The girl rose up slowly, turning her back to him. She continued to moan and sob behind her sleeve, but her cries were slower, more subdued. The man felt his heart swell with pity and laid his hand on her shoulder. Old Jolchu, he pleaded, Old Jolchu, listen to me just for one moment. Suddenly the girl turned around and dropped her sleeve from her hand. Where there should have been two eyes, a mouth, and a nose was nothing but a featureless blank of skin, as smooth as an egg. She began stroking her face with her hand slowly before him. The man screamed and ran away. Up Kino Kunizaka he ran, and all was black and empty before him. On and on he ran, never daring to look back, until at last he saw a lantern, so far away that it looked like the gleam of a firefly, and he made for it. It proved to be the lantern of the late-night soba seller, who set down his stand by the side of the road. The man flung himself down at the feet of the soba seller, crying out, Ah! Ah! <laughs> kore, kore. There, there, said the man. What is the matter with you? Has anybody hurt you? No, nobody hurt me, he replied, wincing. Only, ah! Only scared you, queried the peddler unsympathetically. Robbers, maybe. Not robbers, not robbers, gasped the terrified man. I saw, uh, saw a woman by the moat, and she showed me... Oh, I cannot tell you what she showed me. At this, the sober man began to stroke his own face. Slowly he sto stroked his chin, and as he did, his face began changing. Ah, he said, the features in his face melting away into blankness. Was it by chance anything like this? With horror, the man looked away, uh, or looked on, sorry, looked on as the sober man's face became like an egg, and suddenly the light went out. So, 
that is the story of Mujina here, this spooky woman. I guess this one on the left is one of the classic drawings of it. I'm not sure how old of a tale this is. It's um, it's pretty old though. It's yeah. pretty. It's because like they said, it was before rickshaws. So yeah, there's so... a little fun. Mm -hmm. horror for you yeah and there's been plenty of adaptations of that one into movies and films and stuff so i'd recommend looking into there's, it i love kappa yeah we're talking about kappa now so stephanie will introduce them while i search for something yeah. as well so kappa if i remember right their name literally means water child correct mm -hmm. um they don't really look like a child though do they um so they're both good and bad like there's so many different sources on these guys some say that they're very good med medicine makers and if you can um kind of beat them in a contest they will give you the medicine you desire but they are very powerful if you'll notice the kappa has a bowl on his head and within that bowl he holds water from his home river um and that bowl is what makes him super powerful you cannot defeat him as long as he has water in that bowl because kappas have human like superhuman strength but if you want to defeat them to say get medicine from them you have to usually make them spill the water somehow they say kappa are very polite, though, and if you know um, anything about Japanese culture, it's very common to bow to be polite. So what you can do is you can bow to the kappa, and he'll bow back to be polite, and the water will come out of the plate on his head, and he'll become weak, and then you can defeat him. Hmm. Um, again, another way is like you can just um, challenge him to a sumo wrestling fight, <laughs> and before a sumo wrestling fight, you're always supposed to bow, so he'll bow, and then you'll defeat him. Um, but they do have a way more dark side to them they will drag people into the waters and steal their life gem from them and you do not want to know where the life gem is let me just say that <laughs> we'll describe it in a moment uh i'll let bryce describe that <laughs> let's just say they they reach into a part of you to grab your life gem and it's in an unfortunate place <laughs> Um, anyways, Bryce will tell you about that. So now. the image on screen is from a really cool book I have called Yokai Attack. It's available on Amazon. It's in English. And um, there's not a lot of English sources that are in depth on Yokai like this. And in, in my studying, this is the best one I've found. Um, so it has a whole biography of them and many other animals um, and Yokai. So yeah, the English name means River Child. Um, he's all, they're always male. They're three to five feet tall, 100 centimeters to 150 centimeters, 65 to 100 pounds. Uh, they have webbed fingers and toes. As for distinctive features, they have a beak-like mouth, a tortoise-like shell on their back, frog-like removable skin, um, water-filled depression on the top of the head, and three anuses. Um, that comes in play later. <laughs> Offensive weapons include claws extendable arms and extreme flatulence there's where it came in later um the weaknesses are dehydration particularly the head dish which when spilled drains the kappa's strength they have a strong aversion to iron deer antlers and monkeys sounds like stephanie <laughs> hey um, what <laughs> they are quite common but may be in decline due to global warming apparently uh, they live in rivers lakes swamps and wetlands as well as coastal areas so according to the book, if you've ever heard of any yokai, it's probably this one. He is singularly the most famous yokai in Japan. This amphibious creature has long been feared as a vicious scourge of Japanese rivers, swamps, coastlines, and other bodies of waters. They're also known to take refuge in man-made structures, such as cisterns and garden ponds, and they are occasionally encountered on land in mountainous areas during the winter, when their watery homes freeze over. They can be tracked by their pungent body odor, and that is said to smell of rotting compost. Sounds pleasant. Uh, Kappa are the traditional bogeymen invoked by Japanese parents to frighten young children away from playing near lakes and rivers unattended. And they're actually an Animal Crossing. Um, does anyone here play Animal Crossing? Uh, There's actually um, an Animal Crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Kappen so, and his family. Yep. Mm -hmm. They are, I mean, Kappa, Kappen, I guess, I think these might just be called Kappa in uh, Japanese. Japanese I'm not actually sure. Yeah, if knows. you all like them. That's. Yeah. But yeah, go back to the other slide that has the yeah. weird. Here they are trying to steal the gem from a boy. Yeah. They're um, trying to steal his life force gem. So the attack, although generally considered unaggressive, a kappa should be a, well, absolutely vicious when angered. While particularly famous for uh, challenging unwary passerbys to hand-to-hand -hand wrestling matches, they are also notorious for ambushing and drowning those foolish enough to swim in isolated or fast-moving waters. One strategy is simply to drag a victim below the surface. Another is to remove a swimmer's intestines from below by punching a slimy hand through your, well, you know. Um, the cap isn't after the entrails, but rather the um, shidikul dama, a mysterious organ said to be located in the colon. So that's the gym that Stephanie is talking about. 
Yeah. Um, so essentially, they reach up your butt and grab your life gem. Yeah. Um, and they have to remove their skin when they leave the water, apparently. Um, so tons more information on them in this book. Um, but, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. There's sushi named after them because apparently... It's a very famous sushi. It's mm. a vegetarian sushi, and it's the one I prefer because I don't like fish. Um, mm. So actually... They're scared of cucumbers, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, so but the sushi yeah. right here on the right here is... Uh, is Cucumber, a kappa zushi, kappa kappa maki zushi. Kappa maki zushi. Yeah. Uh, and then this is a warning sign here in the middle, I guess, on some lake or something. It says it's dangerous, uh, so Please don't play do in the water. Play in the water. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, lots of legends surrounding them. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But shall we move on? Yeah. Okay. Here ah, this is what I picked. Yes, I love it. Sorry, yeah. you can go on. Okay, no, sorry. you please introduce oh, her. I gotta okay, so this is Kuchisake Onna. She is very, she's a somewhat more modern, and she actually got way more popular recently just because she is one of those creatures that adapts really well with modern day because she wears a mask to hide a huge slit in her mouth. Her whole mouth is one huge slit, basically. So it kind of fits with the whole, you know, coronavirus thing going on. <laughs> But what she does is supposedly she will encounter you, and like if you're walking in the middle of the night, she'll approach you and say, do you think I'm beautiful? Um, and Bryce, I think you have the different options of what happens depending uh, on... Yeah, no, I didn't mean to put <laughs> oh, that Oh, okay, well, if you, you, she asks, like, am I beautiful? And if you say yes, then she takes off her mask and goes, how about now? Mm. And she has that face. <clears throat> And supposedly, supposedly it varies. Like she can either like, ch- like slice a, a, the same smile into you if you say she's beautiful again. But if you don't yeah. say she's beautiful, she kills you. There's there's a so chart. There's no good. <laughs> yeah. There's no good option for you. I mean, I guess you live if she puts the slice into you. Hmm. But you can. Uh, Bryce was telling me yesterday. Apparently, you can like what confuse her by like drawing the sign. Um, so this book will get into that. The, I remember the conversation yeah. tree. It's like a game style conversation tree. She asks you if she's beautiful. She has her mask on. If you say no, she kills you. If you say yes, she asks, "Am I beautiful now?" And then takes off the mask. If you say no, she kills you. If you say yes, like Stephanie said, she cuts it in your face. Um, surviving an encounter. So she's pretty much just a standard Japanese woman, other than the scary face. Um, and apparently, ninety nine percent of Japanese children are familiar with the story, according to some studies. To avoid an encounter, uh, so the Kuchisake Ona is said to be capable of covering 100 yards in three seconds. That's faster than an Olympic athlete. However, it is also said to be extraordinarily fond of traditional Japanese sweets called Deko Ame. Giving or in a pinch throwing them will distract them long enough so you can escape. It is disgusted by the scent of hair pomade. In some accounts, shouting the word pomade three times has stunned it long enough to allow victims to beat a hasty retreat. <laughs> Isn't that just saying hairspray, basically? Uh, yeah, pretty much. And it's apparently the rumor behind that is that the person that mutilated her face was a doctor or a dentist. So she's scared of pomade, which... Oh, the doctor supposedly had thickly pomaded hair, so that's why she's scared. Oh, he had a lot of hairspray. Yeah. I don't know if that... I mean, I think that might be a newer addition to that. Uh, in addition to the rumor, pomade, the chanting three times drives it away. Uh, it is said that the attacks are more frequently often occurring in places with the word three in their names or addresses. So the Mie prefecture, which is written with the kanji for the number three, is said to be a particularly haunted location by the Kuchisakona. So quite fascinating in my opinion. I like her. Um, and they also made a manga recently where it's actually a romance um, with her in it. Because, of course they did. <laughs> of course they did. Because um, as you can see, she's actually very beautiful until the mask comes off. And even that nowadays, they draw her as very pretty with the mask off. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and there's all yeah, there's all kinds of works of fiction surrounding her. So I would absolutely recommend, like on the previous page here, um, there's movies, like live action movies. And when I was looking this up, I was just looking for pictures to include. There's dozens of movies and manga about it, so it'd be worth looking into i think um do you have any more about that one stephanie mm-hmm. so i don't know if i particularly have an article for this one but some of you noticed her before uh akuma so this is a particular <laughs> akuma that i like um but akuma means devil in japanese Jeez, um, yeah i know well she, uh, she's hey hey, hey. <laughs> I just don't get the Her appeal. character is 
Those they're are cute. cute. A devil. They are cute. She, she is. I just, I guess I get bored watching them, but as long Reasonable. as you guys Reasonable. like them, then that's all that matters. This is a virtual YouTuber. Her character design is an Akuma. Now, I don't have a write-up about Akuma a Akuma is just a very general word for a demon. Like, when I was watching um, Devil Cryba Devilman Crybaby, they actually would refer to Satan sometimes as Akuma. So mm. it's, like, very, very widespread. Yeah. Like, it's just used kind of haphazardly versus yeah. American. America has devils, Satan, imps, you know. Mm. Japan just has Akuma. Mm. Um, there's not really, like, a better word. They might have King Akuma to mean Satan, but that's Maybe. not it. Yeah, but just general term. Um, so if you ever need to say, oh, you're a devil or you're Satan or something, you can absolutely um, use the word Akuma. And if you look at the kanji here, we'll, we'll teach vocab later. Um, this is the character meaning evil, and this means magic. So we'll go into that here in a bit. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend watching her if you're into VTubers. She's very small, so give her some views. Um, so you guys might be wondering, well, what the heck is Halloween like today in Japan? Um, and you might even be thinking, I bet they don't celebrate Halloween in Japan. Well, they, they really, really, really do celebrate it. Um, the most famous location for Halloween celebrations is the Shibuya Halloween event, Shibuya Halloween Evento. So you guys probably know Shibuya for the famous Shibuya Scramble Crossing. It's like an eight directional uh, street crossing. Uh, Shibuya is kind of like the Times Square of Tokyo. Very, very popular and crowded. Um, you, can, you can see all kinds of people cosplaying here. This was from a few years ago. It gets very, very rowdy late at night. Um, in Japan, public drinking is actually completely illegal. So you can take a can of your favorite alcoholic beverage and take it with you. And you can imagine if you have millions of people in one crossing, much. all drinking, by about 1 a.m., some, some stuff starts to happen. So they've cracked down on it a little bit yeah. recently. It, it um, used to be worse in past years. Like, I heard it got yeah. so bad that they were considering banning it. Yeah. Because so many, like, people were, like, flipping cars. Yeah, no, like, last like, year, I think it's... two cars got flipped. My friend was walking around there streaming on Twitch during that, and it was so hectic and crazy crowded. But, um... It's, it, I think it probably started off as just people going to hang out, and I think now they've officially made it like a Shibuya District-sponsored event so they can control the crowds. Um, but this year, because of the coronavirus, obviously that is not going to be happening uh, in its normal environment. Um, so I think I have a picture. It says stay yeah. virtual. So, so yeah, stay virtual. Halloween Fest. So they've actually like made a virtual VR game. Stay you can kind of see back here. Yeah, stay virtual. <laughs> Um, it's, it's kind of like VR chat now, or if you play Project Sekai, like the lives there. So everybody can like make a character and go hang out in Shibuya, a digital recreation of it, celebrate Halloween. And I, I, I've not played it. It's probably still up. It's just now 8 a.m. Halloween in Japan. So if you have any interest in it, you should look into that. Um, here's some more pictures of the cosplayers on Halloween in Shibuya. This is, I guess, earlier in the day, so it's not so crowded. This person's cosplaying Madoka. From Madoka Magica, uh, and then my favorites, the um, the minion. Minions are huge. In I was gonna say, I saw freaking. I went to Tokyo Tower, and they had so many yeah. like souvenirs that had the minions on the tower, and I hated it. And I kept going <laughs> to these national like Japanese historical places, and they kept mm. having these freaking minion souvenirs where it was like this very old designed Japanese building, and they would just have a stupid minion <laughs> going like ha ha. Like right next to it, and I hated it. I hate the minions so much. They're really popular. I hate though. minions though. Well, you wouldn't be <laughs> Japanese. They, you wouldn't be accepted in your group of peers because everybody there. No, because minions. I have a friend who joke. Never mind. Point is, <laughs> I, I personally think the Minion movie is one of the best anime ever made. Um, so me and Stephanie disagree on this. But if you ever want an opportunity to cosplay in public in Japan, this is probably the time and place to do it because uh, lots of other people will too, and it's a big party. Um, here's, I think this is from 2018 or 2019. You can see, um, they've started to control the crowds very specifically. Um, to any of you that have been to Japan before, this is quite reminiscent of what it looks like during fireworks festivals. It, it, I, I am not exaggerating when I say they will fit 1 million people into streets like this at this crowd density. You'll see. It was awful. I, I, it was fun. It was fun though. It was awesome. But I, I very often felt like I would be trampled to death. Um, they have vans here um with police on top of them shouting like not to cross certain lines and stuff they do really really good job at crowd control uh, when we uh, me and stephanie were at 
I think it was the Adachigawa Fireworks Festival, which is like the most crowded one in Tokyo. Um, I so like imagine this is a path to walk. They don't let you stand or stop in the path, and then here you can stand. So I was standing literally on the edge of the path. So the police officer kept like grabbing people because they were stopping and he was like pushing them along, but they would get knocked into me every time. And then like Stephanie was standing behind me. So she, cause she's so small, she'd get like thrown over. It was, it was awesome. I highly recommend it. Okay. I'm glad you had an um, awesome time. The, um, <laughs> the cell phone networks go down because there's so many people in one area. Oh yeah. Our every internet time, stopped working. Yeah. The cell phone network just crashes. Um, Another big part of modern day Halloween in Japan is the Universal Studios Japan. They call it Yiniba, uh, Halloween Horror Nights. So just like we have here in the U.S., um, in Florida and California, there's a Universal Studios theme park in Osaka. And every one of my friends in Osaka goes there at least once during Halloween time. And you cosplay um, something. So they have the haunted houses and the performances and the horror nights like we do. Uh, but they take it to an extreme by everybody cosplaying. So you'll see more minions here in the corner and spooky moments going on. Um, I believe this is a promotional picture, but this is a picture somebody's actually taken of the event. So just like we have the scare actors working around uh, walking and scaring people, they do that too. Um, big, big, big party there as well. I mean, that's kind of a tradition, especially if you're in West Japan. You kind of have to do that. Um, so let's see if any of these videos play. Yeah, these are gonna play. Universal, Universal Studio Japan no Halloween Horror Night wa dress up ga izana. Utsukushiki horror no juni e. Otona Halloween. Saikyo zombie to dance de hajukero. Zombie de dance. That's the first what time I've watched that. What just happened? Uh, <laughs> Why'd you put it if you didn't watch it? Well, because I wanted to demonstrate. So now we're going to teach you guys some Japanese vocab, Halloween y Japanese uh, vocab. So, like we said before, Akuma, so evil. It can be pronounced Aku or Wadu. So the adjective for bad is Wadui. This kanji with an e at the end. Fun fact: uh, Wadui is where the name for Waduiji and Wadio come from. It's a pun. Because they're the bad guys. Because they're bad Mario and Waduiji. Used to be. Used to be mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, the ma here is maho no ma, which means magic or magical or spiritual. So bad magic. Bad magic is devil. Um, she doesn't look like that evil to me, but you know, um, <laughs> she's she's quite nice actually. I know for a fact. I've talked to her. Uh, similarly, that same kanji, the ma and akuma, with ho here, and I don't know off the top of my I head what ma like means. Ho no ho. Yeah, I think so. So ma ho is how you say magic. So uh, yeah, we're gonna look up to see what the the ho in. Type ho ritsu. Ho ho ritsu. Ho ritsu with a long ho ritsu. Ho ritsu. Yeah, see there you go. Yeah, so that kanji, yeah, it's like law, method, mood. So magical dharma. law. So yeah. literally the law of magic. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, so the magical girl genre is the maho shoujo genre, shoujo being young girl. So looks very different. They've simplified it a lot, but these two characters here are maho. So the name of Madoka Magica in Japanese is maho shoujo Madoka Magica, right? Uh, that whole genre, like Sailor Moon, all that. Just is, cutesy girls yeah. who can do magic. Basically. Maho shoujo. Mm -hmm. um, next word, Stephanie. Majo. Majo. Same ma there. But it means witch, um, and you like it does have like woman kanji. So the mm -hmm. second kanji means woman, and again the first one's magic, so magical woman. Mm -hmm. um, Same yeah. jo as shoujo, if you're curious. Mm. Uh, Sigi. Yeah, sigi wa oni. So goblin. oni means goblin. Uh, generally, oni is considered to be a little more dark magic. Like yokai is not necessarily evil. Oni isn't necessarily, but it has more of an implication. Um, so this is a character from Toho that is an Oni. Um, in addition to that, the word Oni is also slang. A lot of you probably have heard people say something like Totemo kawaii or Cho kawaii or Mecha kawaii, right? All that means super cute, like amazingly cute. Uh, oni, meaning devil, 
can also be put before words to emphasize them exactly the same way. Uh, it sounds really Tokyo to me and quite old, but you'd say oni kawaii, and that means the same thing. Also, don't be like me when my when I was first learning Japanese, I got graded off in high school because I would say watashi no oni san, yeah, but I would accidentally say oni san. Mm. So I was instead of saying my brother, I said. <laughs> My goblin. My goblin. So, my, my Mr. Uh, goblin. Don't be like me, who has <laughs> the teacher emailing her with laughing, writing, ha ha ha, you said my goblin. I have to count you <laughs> off for that. Don't do that again. And I was like, oh, what? Yeah, I, I had been learning Japanese for two weeks by then. I didn't even know. I was like, what? So yeah, be careful. <laughs> oni, and then Oni-san. Mm. So there, don't there forget the extra difference. E, yeah. yeah, Oni-san. Um, don't be like me. That was embarrassing. I've accidentally said worse, to be honest, actually. <laughs> I can't even remember what the worst one was, but I remember Sensei had to stop class for a little bit because she was laughing. But really? I, That's so funny. Yeah, you were there. No, I said something <laughs> super inappropriate on accident, and she wouldn't tell me what I said, but she said it was, like, she was, like, laughing and, like, trying to stifle it, and I don't know what I said, but anyway. I've had that happen to me, too. <laughs> When I when I was having that pizza party for the uh, Kansai Gai Gai students with Ian that, that came mm. this past year, I you know I was talking to them fully in Japanese the whole night and I must have like slurred my words together once because I was standing there and I, I was asking my friend if she wants a bowl of ice cream but the way I said it I must have said something really bad I don't know what I said because everybody in the room except me and Ian just started laughing and I'm like. Casey, like he's he's half Japanese. I'm like Casey, what did I say? And he just he just looked at me, and I'm like, what? Did I, I still to this day don't know what I said. Because Japanese people don't tell you; they just laugh at you. Yeah. <laughs> they don't tell you. <laughs> I wish I knew, but yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, oni, very good. I think this is a really cool looking kanji. I don't know why it just, it like looks it. like a devil. Um, spirit. So we talked about yokai at the beginning. Um. So again, good or bad. Kind of like yeah. in English where spirits can be good or bad. Um, yeah, the, but they, some that's of them... a funky looking boy. Yeah, he's a weirdo. <laughs> Why did you pull that one up? Like, just, what even is he? I don't know. He's a jar boy. If somebody finds out what there this one is. There are so many yokai, by the way. <laughs> There's like really obscure ones for like really small towns. Also, like one time I was walking in Japan and I'd walk, been walking for like two hours and I accidentally wandered into a city that had kappa at every single store. Mm. Like, you know, you, you would be walking and every store had two or three kappas outside. And like the streets had kappa hanging from the lights, That's weird. and like I was like, oh, "What did? We, where am <laughs> I?" Spooky. And there were kappa everywhere. It must have been Mia. You must have been in Mia. Oh, because that would make sense, wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, the point is, is sometimes you just wander into <laughs> really, and you're like, "Am I gonna die? Like, did I just walk into a cult?" Maybe <laughs> this is like, uh, it's like the voodoo districts of Louisiana or something. But yeah, they're yeah. not inherently evil. Just like there's like I think eight million kami is what they say. There's there's like, even one for coronavirus. Like, no, really? like, there's one that's supposed to, like, help heal oh. diseases that lately got really popular at social media. Wow. And, yeah, she oh, was, okay. like, a very obscure one, but people have brought her into popularity because she's a yokai that apparently might cure COVID. Interesting. I posted about it a long time ago. I'll bring it up. Yeah, sometime, please just so. send it. Yeah, yeah. so, they're, but, yeah, they're not inherently evil. They're kanji, the first kanji. This one means bewitching. can also mean attract calamity. Um, it's all, also used in... One of the words for fairy, um, which is yosei, um, that's not in our list because it's not halloween -y. And then the second word means suspicious or mystery or apparition. That's also used in well, all kinds of words. Um, so I'd recommend looking into it if you're interested. Um, but ghost slash phantom, um, yudei, I find these kanji quite pretty quite complex um that's like a standard ghost like um like phantom sort of poltergeist style floaty ghost that goes around versus yokai which is just a spirit so a demon could be a spirit but a demon could not be a yude if it can be like physical it's not a yude oh yeah we have a note for you she found the yokai that is the anti-coronavirus yeah, it, it got popular on twitter its name is um uh, Amab, Amabi, and it's half bird, half fish kind of thing, and apparently she's just, she's a yokai specifically meant to cure 
epi- epidemics. <laughs> and apparently she got huge on Twitter. A lot of Americans were like, what the heck is going on? What is that thing? <laughs> It happened for a few days back in March, so I don't know if you guys saw it. But, yeah, she was just, like, a quick little fad. She was on the top of Twitter because, like, artists were trying to chase away COVID by drawing her and summoning her. So, yeah, fun fact. She's really cute. Cool. Well, very neat. We'll have to learn some more. We'll send in the chat later about her, I suppose. Next word. Kurai, which Mm -hmm. just means dark. Yeah. The opposite is akarui, which means bright. Mm-hmm. But could I? I the way I remember it is like if you're scared of the dark, you could I? You oh, cry. That's good. Um. So yeah, if you're scared of the dark, you cry. Could I? Could I? Mm. Mm. And um. So like this would be used like to describe places at night. Like yoru wa could I? Right. Nighttime is dark. Yeah. Tsugi tsugi wa. Similar, kind of uh, ambiguously different. Uh, yummy darkness um so this is like the concept of darkness versus describing the absence of light if that makes sense i know that's kind of ambiguous like darkness took over the land yeah that kind of thing um so this is common in names for evil characters in anime um i i can't provide any particular examples other than like a character's name being literally yummy that's pretty common um I think this is a very neat kanji. You'll learn a lot to have these gates up Yami here. Yami Yugi, isn't that his name? I think so, yeah. Yeah, like Yu-Gi-Oh, Yami Yugi, literally yeah. Dark Yugi. Dark Yugi. Hmm. Um, this means sound, and then this is um, like a, a temple gate. I don't really know why those two things go together to mean night or darkness. So if somebody knows, let me know. Um, kabocha, <laughs> pumpkin. Um, the type of pumpkin used in Japan for cooking is called kabocha. In fact, the kind of pumpkin we eat in America is also called kabocha. You can eat normal pumpkins too, like the carving pumpkins. Um, but Japanese kabocha pumpkins are what we use in pumpkin pie and such. Um, they, they refer to both as kabocha. Um, but, you know, this is, I think, from America. I don't think this is actually a Japanese picture. But, um, carved pumpkins, it's not so much a tradition there to do it, but they're aware of the idea of it, at the very least. Um, these kanji together here, it's not actually common to write this in kanji. It's usually hiragana. Uh, this means southern, and this is melon or gourd. Um, but again, just, just know yeah. how to read the hiragana. It's one of those ones where you don't even bother learning the kanji. Yeah, no, no one's going to use they're, it. They're, they're literally like antiquated kanji. Like It's not a thing. Like You don't have to. Like You shouldn't for these. But um, I believe this is also in Chinese character used like for the word melon. Um, so good to know. Uh, just the word Halloween. 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 Yep. There's a few different spellings of it. This is the most common. Uh, some spellings drag out different parts of the word, so yeah. I think as long as you just say it close enough, they would know what you Especially said. Especially if you're speaking it, as long as yeah. you, yeah. Um, I think sometimes the line, the, the lengthening line here, oh. is omitted, but oh. it's common to include it. Um, yeah, cosplay is a big deal in Japan, as you know. That's where it came from, so... Uh, Mira. Mira. If you remember, if you guys watched anime with us last time, mm-hmm. it was about a Mira. So like he's a little miniature mummy. Yeah, tiny little and mummy. And it's from what Portuguese? Yeah, the word Portuguese Mira, which means mummy. I don't know. So I guess they took it from Portugal. I don't know why. What but... if the Portuguese brought mummies when they showed up? I don't know. That'd, that'd be kind of weird. I don't know. <laughs> um, so candy, snacks, and otherwise, there are all kinds of words associated with this. First word being okashi. Okashi is any kind of snack. It can be candy, it can be sweets, it can be cookies, it can be crackers, uh, it can be anything, chips. Anything yeah. sweet that is a snack. It doesn't necessarily even have to be sweet. It usually is. When you think yeah, of a snack in Japan, you usually think of something sweet. Or spicy. Yeah, or spicy. Those but spicy boys. Yeah, little spicy chips or something. But it's, um, you know, snack in general. The next word comes from English. Uh, candy. Candy. Uh, you can guess what that one means. It literally <laughs> means candy. Uh, and of course, this just refers to sweets in general. There is a native Japanese word meaning candy. It's ame. Uh, ame. I think usually nowadays they use ame to mean hard candy, though, don't they? Yeah. Um, one example, like candies, like we have to think of like Jolly Ranchers and stuff. It's called nodo ame. Usually they have a little bit of mint throat? in there. Throat lozenges. They. Uh, <laughs> That's so, so weird. In the U.S. as well, around the 1800s and Britain. Um, Candy was used to suppress coughs. Um, that's where cough drops come from. Drops is an old candy-making term for that shape of candy, and it was used to suppress coughs. Now they've separated cough drops in the U.S. by adding menthol to it to make it medicinal. 
Um, but in Japan, Noto Ama throat candy can still just be normal candy that you just eat. I have some downstairs, actually. Um, yum, yum. Yeah, very good. And then chocolate, uh, the long word for chocolate. Uh, you can also say choco. So, for example, chocolate mint ice cream, Uzaki chan's favorite, is called chocolate mint. I love chocolate mint. Yeah, chocolate mint is a great combo. That's why when I got to Japan, I was so happy. I was like, people here actually appreciate mm -hmm. my toothpaste flavored. <laughs> I didn't know it was unpopular. <laughs> I'm just delight. kidding. I'm just kidding. It's what? not toothpaste flavored. But yeah, no, everyone in America is like, it tastes like toothpaste. I'm like, you're uncivilized. What kind of toothpaste are you buying? <laughs> I thought everybody it, liked chocolate mint, but like, no, it's, it's, it's almost as about. like controversial as pineapple on pizza, I'd say. I never realized that until like, this I didn't year. either until mm -hmm. someone's like, oh, I guess you like eating toothpaste. And I almost like threw. You should my, just pull out a tube of toothpaste fly. and look him in the eyes and just look. squeeze it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I've eaten weirder. I wouldn't put it past yeah. me to do. Oh, um, anyway. This next word is vampire. I love this one. Kiyoketsuki. <laughs> Literally suck blood demon. <laughs> yeah, suck blood demon or suck blood goblin. So this Q here is um, the word for, yeah, to inhale or to suck. So you'll learn the word to smoke tobacco is actually translated as to suck tobacco. Uh, and it's this with um, a verb conjugated at the end. Then this is blood, like a blood cell. It looks like the character for plate, but with a little dot on the end. Uh, and then oni, like we just learned before. And together it's kiyuketsuki. And you can also say vampire, which is probably how I will always say it. I will forget this by the next slide, I am certain. <laughs> um, but it's good to know this is one of the words that you can look at and be like, oh, this makes complete sense. Um, then here's uh, Oshino Shinobu from Bakemonogatari. She is a vampire. She's a few thousand years old, <laughs> my understanding. Uh, speaking of Bakemonogatari, that name means monster story or monster tale. Bakemono is monster. Fun fact, that's what Shrek's called in the Japanese Shrek. There mm -hmm. is no word for ogre in Japanese. No. So they kept, he's like, Oro wa Pokemono da. I am a monster. Because, <laughs> like, in the English, he says, I am an ogre. But, like, in the Japanese, he just says, I'm a monster. Mm -hmm. um, they they actually use several words for him throughout the movie. They don't just stick with Pokemon. He just calls himself a different variation of the mm. word monster. He sometimes calls himself Olga. Just yeah, Olga. Yeah, but I, <laughs> but I, I, again, they don't have a literal translation for ogre. So mm. they use Pokemon like, at the beginning so that people know that he's a monster. And then they start mm. using Olga more too. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you just drop this word here. You might recognize this from go being language, um, like Nihongo, that's the go in Nihongo, or Ego, that's the go. Um, it can also be pronounced uh, Gatari, I suppose. Um, so Bakemono Gatari is just literally monster and story. Pretty neat, I do think. This one's pretty obvious. This is zombie. Uh, I'm sure there is a native word for it. I don't know what it is, but this is common enough. Uh, this is a little line sticker, the line chat app. You can you can buy this somewhere. Fun story time. Uh, when I arrived in Kansai in the summer, I was approached by a film crew. We did a TV show together. Long story. I'll tell some other time. Uh, but the segment on the show before me was a dude that is in Japan to do his master's thesis on Japanese zombies. So apparently zombie movies are really big in Japan. Um, nobody ever told me that, but um, apparently there's a wealth of Japanese zombie films to be watched, so I would recommend it on his behalf. Um, Stephanie? Bochi. <laughs> Bochi. I wasn't ready. You, you, you were Sorry. on fire, Bryce. Sorry, so Bochi can mean graveyard or cemetery. Mm. Um, cemeteries in Japan look way different than American ones. They're like they're like more compact, as you can see, where they're like all back to back, and mm. like they're all very narrow and tall. Yeah. I, they still make me uncomfortable. Uh, English, they're equally creepy. Yeah, equally creepy. In fact, they're almost slightly creepier in how uncharacteristically different they are not from each other. Like, yeah. in America, you can be like, wow, all these graves look slightly different. In this one, you're like, wow, they all look the same, and this is where I'm going to end up one day. And you yeah. are like, wow, I am uncomfortable, <laughs> just like in any cemetery. This one is massive as well. This is in Ueno, which is one of the biggest districts in Tokyo. I took this photo, actually, and uh, it goes on for, like, a kilometer. And then there's, like, a little section for, like, Western-style graves from, like, foreigners that have died in Japan as well. 
uh, when we were there, so every day, uh, like an hour before sunset in every city, for the most part, on their PA broadcast system, like there's, there's central speakers in most cities that broadcast important messages. Uh, so at 5 p.m. in the summer, like an hour before sunset, they play this specific song. I, I think, you, what song? It's like it? a very creepy child song mm. from like back during the World War II era. And the reason they have, like every single town in Japan basically has speakers because they, back when they well, the were, um, the, during the war, they would use these speakers to announce when a, a, a bomb was coming. Mm. But nowadays, they still use them every single night to tell kids, hey, it's getting dark, you should go home. But secretly, they're also doing it to test the speakers to make sure they're still working. Yeah. That way, in case of emergencies. But what ensues is very creepy music playing Throughout right, the whole when, city. right when it's about to get dark. Yeah, it's so, like the witching hour. And I was, my house was right near <laughs> the freaking speaker, so I would just be studying my kanji, and you'd hear, doon, 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 And then if you were unlucky, you were next to a speaker that was very staticky. Blasting. And, like, it would be getting dark around you, and it's just oh. going, doon, 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 and you're like, oh. It's really spooky. <laughs> it's really scary. But, yeah, fun oh. fact. Japan has random speakers that play right before it gets dark, mm. and you are not ready for it. And you no. look like the first night I like was walking, and I like looked around, panicked. What's and, going like, on? No one else was concerned, and I was like, "What is going on?" Mm. And you know, being in a cemetery when there's a creepy song just suddenly starts playing, and they start it off by they do test the siren first. They'll, they'll like go like boop boop, and then it like it plays the song, and then at this one there was like a woman's voice announcing something. I don't know what she was saying. Some probably to leave the cemetery. Maybe. Probably I don't know, but like it was you could hear there's like a hundred speakers broadcasting this. So it was just echoing throughout the air. It was, oh, it was really very creepy. creepy. So yeah, if you go to Japan, don't don't be alarmed. Don't be freaked out. Yeah, no, you I, will be though. I, it, I guarantee it. You hmm. can not prepare yourself for how terrifying it is. We saw one during the Kakahashi yeah. project. It was a big cemetery. Didn't we go to one? It was an accident, yeah. Where, where Anyways. Was anyway, anyway. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, next word is tengu. Um, you've probably seen these guys around. There's an emoji for them. Um, this is specifically translated as goblin. Uh, I know we said only as goblin. This is a specific type of goblin, a long-nosed goblin. Uh, I don't know why he has a long nose. Um, if anybody knows the answer, <laughs> <laughs> feel free to let me know. <laughs> Got it. Um, but these guys are pretty characteristic. Um, you wear these masks at lots of different festivals. Wear a whole little full costume with it. Um, not much to be said about this. There's all kinds of stories behind them. Maybe we'll read it later. <laughs> so this is kawaii. Um, be very careful if you're trying to call someone or something cute. Cute is kawaii. Scary is kawaii. The English difference between kawaii and kawaii is not always clear. Americans tend to not uh, properly enunciate their vowels in Japanese. In fact, that's one of the things that will make you sound the most natural, is ensuring all of your vowels are consistent. And Japanese vowels in a given dialect are always pronounced exactly the same, regardless of inflection or position in a sentence, with few exceptions. Um, so... If you have people saying that you have an accent, it's probably your vowels. Um, so, kowai is scary. There's This kanji is also used in things like I think uh, ia is um, is the same character, which means like it's possibly like yada, I believe is that. That um, picture. Yeah, yeah, you might be wondering why there's a picture of Disturbed <laughs> Curious George on the screen. Uh, the answer to that is when me and Stephanie were working on this at like 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, while looking for pictures, I just searched, like, kawaii mono, like, scary things, uh, and <laughs> for some reason this picture right? came up, and I couldn't help but include it. Um, <laughs> I, I quite like this. I might make that my profile picture. Make sure somewhere. go back to okami yeah. otoko. Yeah. So this is okami otoko. Wolfman. Wolfman. Literally, okami means wolf, and otoko means man, so literally their word for werewolf is wolfman. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the natural Japanese word. I mean, where man. means man in Old English, so it's. Oh, uh, does it? Yeah, it's the I same. I don't know that. I'm pretty sure it's Old English. It's either Old yeah. English or old, like um, Old German. But what, if, what if it's a woman? Back then, that kind there was not necessarily that distinction. Just like now, we say mankind. That comes ah, from the same root, I believe, as where. Uh, but are there female werewolves? Why would? Have why you ever would, seen one? Does that mean? Are you suggesting that if a werewolf bit a woman, she wouldn't become a werewolf? 
I've Are been, you saying we're immune to werewolves? I don't know. I've just never seen a female werewolf before. Have you? I guess not. Even Twilight claims only the males can turn into werewolves, so maybe that yeah. is a thing. I don't know. Somebody. I never actually thought it. about that. Leave a comment down below. <laughs> um, but yeah, I. Wow. I mean, because yeah, it, this is very clearly man as in male in huh. uh, Japanese. But uh, yeah, now that you mention it, there's not many female ones unless someone's going out of their way to be inclusive. I don't know. Yeah, okay, I don't know. So, Thanks, back yeah. to Pierce George. Kuro neko. Kuroi means black. Mm -hmm. And then neko is cat. So, you just drop the I and just be kuro neko. Instead of kuroi neko, you just say kuro neko. Yeah. Black cat. Uh, and I don't know if black cats have the same evil significance in Japanese folklore. I don't think they no, do. I don't think so. Um, I'm sure they've adopted it from Western media oh. to portray the same ideas in certain cases. This in particular is Blair from Soul Eater. She turns herself she into a She is a, a cat. witch, but yeah, she's yeah. not a bad person. She's so a witch. I guess maybe it's not bad. I don't know. Well, that's worth No, she's just mischievous. As well. Oh gosh, this next one. Next one. <laughs> this is Bryce's making. Listen, I just we were you. really tired at this point. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> this was all him. And isn't, it, isn't she a cat? She's not she's a, a bat. bat. She's a bat. She looks like a cat. She has wings. She has. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, cats don't have wings, last I checked. Okay, fine, whatever. Cole Mori so yeah. is bat. <laughs> Cole but, Mori is bat. I, of course, he stole the tea posing idea, as you're going to see in the next slideshow, because I found a tea posing <laughs> thing first. Well, he took let's it. go to it. <laughs> Guy this, this is the slide I've been waiting for. I made this. Do so, it. Click it. Click it. Click it. Click it. Yes. So, <laughs> um, kotsu means bones, and if you've ever had ton kotsu ramen, ton means pig and kotsu means bones because the broth is made from pig bones. Guy means like, well, there's bones in that one too. We all got bones inside of us. Bone guy. Bone guy. guy. Guy bones. Guy bones. Yeah, I don't know what this means, uh, but it's well, I do know it means skeleton. So, man, hunt your skeleton, Lucy. Let's. <laughs> Can we continue before we get a talk, guys? Yes. Okay. Anyway. Hold on, one more, one more. Wait, get Stephanie, hold on. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, 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 okay. Okay, okay, sorry. Um, okay, okay. Um, now, yeah, that was, Stephanie has been waiting for this moment. She's been so excited about Sans Undertale. I, I copied and pasted that image. I was going to do even more. Like, I was going to make it where you can almost not see the word. You should have wrote the kanji with Sans. Oh, no. Um, so, we are done with vocabulary for the night, but let's do a little more spooky facts. Because it's real life now. Yeah, so, this says, Honmono no yandere no takooka yika. So, Last year, in the Shinjuku district, across the street from where Stephanie was living, um, <laughs> a woman that lived in Shinjuku was quite fond of a man that also lived in Shinjuku. And he wasn't fond of her, apparently, um, because I don't know what. Well, you'll find out why. So she showed up at his house, stabbed him like five times with a knife. And then he, like, collapsed on the floor and was bleeding. And then she kind of, like, rolled around in his blood, smoked a cigarette, and called the police, and turned herself in. And she said, and I quote, I loved him so much I could not help myself. Yeah. Uh, she <laughs> is a real-life yandere. These are actual pictures of her. This is when she's being tried. Um, this is one of her Instagram pictures. Again, trial, more Instagram pictures, and uh, an account, I guess, that's saying she was... Um, what, 5 million yen bail? I oh, guess. there's pictures of online of her, like, next to his body, just smoking yeah. a cigarette covered in his blood. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, we considered including it, but I, I didn't want to accidentally do anything. I'm not allowed to, so look up, look up her name if you want to learn more about her. Yeah, um, she was all over the news in Japan, and I was yeah. like, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's where I was. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, Shinjuku is where I go. Yeah, and you know, he said, <laughs> after he got stabbed, he didn't die. He survived the stabbing. Yeah, he's fine. And they interviewed him and said, like, so what do you think? And he's like, well, you know, she did it because she loves me, so I don't hold it against her. Or something like that. And I'm like, that's a weird outlook. Um, she's now in prison for the next three years. She was imprisoned, I believe, April of 2019. Or oh, April of this year. No, I think it was April this year. I, just, I, it I think it's just three years, because huh. she didn't end up actually killing him. True. Um, Japan, Japan's... Um... <laughs> 
judicial system. I actually took a class on this in the summer. They don't <laughs> punish people as harsh as American judicial system. The prison system is a lot would, more tough. Because because be it because the American judicial system is more about punishment. And yeah. Uh, everywhere else is more about like reforming. I right. that. Oh, that's actually really nice, though. I've heard Japanese prisons are pretty strict, like... They're actually teaching and shaping you up to be a better person. Well, but, like, depending on what crime you've committed, I've heard stories of people having to just, like, kneel 12 hours a day in darkness. And that's, like, that's your punishment. And then hey, you can, then it, you can it, eat. whatever works, Yeah, man. I mean, monks <laughs> do that willingly, so it's not, like, that's big of a deal, but... Um, I think that's called a strange and unusual punishment in America. Yeah, you wouldn't be allowed to do that. I think that, that is America. illegal, so yeah. Yeah, but she has an Instagram account that's still active. It's kind of interesting to go on there and read the comments people are, are uh, leaving. Like, just like serial killers in the U.S. have a bunch of simps. Like, uh, I don't know. I can't, <laughs> She's got a lot I was going to say John Wayne Gacy, but he's a clown. Nobody likes clowns. No, it's Ted Bundy. Yeah, Ted Bundy and, like, killers like that. I mean, she's, like, her account is just filled with comments saying, like, ah, kawaii and stuff like that. In English, Japanese... Portuguese, Chinese, all over the place. Um, I mean, she does cosplay. She was pretty big online, I think, even before this happened. But now she has like fifty thousand followers or something. So, um, I, I'm I'm interested to see what happens when she gets out of prison. Um, but what's next? I don't even know. Ah, Mino Koen no Momiji Mi. So you might be familiar in Japan with the cherry blossom viewing culture. So cherry blossom is sakura, um, flower is hana. And this character here means to look at, meet. So there's something called Hanami season, flower viewing season, every spring where Japanese people and people from all around the world come to look at the cherry blossoms. But not many people know that this is a thing in the fall as well. Momiji is maple. This is the character for leaf, ha. You'll see this in things like uh, the name for Akihabara, district of Tokyo. Uh, it means leaf. And then this is, in this context, pronounced, um, I guess... What that be? Well, um, mo, mo probably, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but it means like fall red, like leaf red color. Uh, the Mino Koen is a specific uh, semi national park in Osaka. It's my favorite place in the world. Um, this, these are pictures of fall time in um, Mino. So there are so many um, red maple trees here and they all become beautiful there's even in kyoto like a maple leaf viewing uh, scenic train ride you can take it takes you through the countryside to look at all the maple leaves but this park is, a, is about an hour hike you take this train about an hour outside of city center osaka and you're in this like middle of nowhere countryside town and then you walk past this mountainside hot spring hotel up a little path of little old grandma's stalls selling different things and then you go past all kinds of mountain lodges, picnic areas, a kid's bug center, like a science museum for kids, uh, ramen shops, ice cream shops. And then you make it to this big waterfall at the top with a bridge and a sitting area would be right about here. Uh, this, the grandmas along the road traditionally sell these deep fried maple leaves, momiji. Um, it's kind of weird from American context to think about eating deep fried maple leaves. We don't generally eat tree leaves. Um, I've eaten these before, uh, and I've actually made these before. I happen to have this kind of maple tree in my yard, uh, and I am planning on at some point making some for you guys and handing them out. I don't know when I'll be able to, but I will at some point do that. Um, they're very delicious. They have sesame oil in them. And that's, the, why, they, that's why you should, guys should get a Japanese miner, because then you'll no. get... You'll get deep fried maple leaves if you want. Yeah. Already done. Hey, thank We're you. Proud of you. We're proud of you. Yeah, if you if well, you show well, us. Well, I did that whenever I transferred. Like I already. Oh. Well, we're if still you proud of you. If you show us that you become a, an Asian miner, we will personally come mm. to your home, bring you leaves, yeah. uh, do a tanabata dance. Uh, uh, and um, oh, I'm looking forward to this. Yard. I'm holding it to your word. <laughs> we'll TP your yard. We'll do uh, something. Yeah. For, but um, <laughs> I'm holding yeah. you to your word. All right. We'll do it. We'll do it when you don't expect it, though. We're yeah. Not, it's a surprise. <laughs> Generally during, like, pre-dawn hours is when we are most comfortable arriving. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, maple leaves, they're good. They're, try them. Uh, the grandmas that make them, there's videos, like, on Great Big Story that have done this. It's been passed down for hundreds of years. They harvest the leaves. They pickle them, leave them until next year. Leaf them. Leaf until... them until next year. <laughs> and um, then they deep fry them daily. And I remember the, the grandma I bought this from was her and probably her grandson that was selling them. And she was just sitting there just stirring this big pot of bubbling oil, putting leaves in them. 
uh, super delicious. And this park is legitimately my favorite place in the world. I've been all kinds of places in Japan and America and Europe. This is the best. Minhera K or Yami Kawaii. So some of you might be mm. familiar with uh, Harajuku fashion, right? Um, there's all kinds of subcultures in Harajuku fashion. Um, one particularly popular one, especially recently due to the declining mental health of the youth in Japan, um, is Minhera K. So the character right here, I believe it's her, is called Minhera, one of, one of them on there. Minhera means mental health, it's short for mental health, and K means style. So it's a genre of pastel cute colors mixed with elements of mental illness, which is... A.K.A. goth, kind of. Kind I mean, of goth. Or like emo? E goth, it's like goth emo scene mixed with Harajuku pastel and then throw in like syringes and pills. Uh, if you've ever seen a girl, it's, it's, hers are like this, it's hard to see. Most girls will put like red uh, blush under their eyes and it's called meno shitachiku. Uh, which is to signify that you've been crying, apparently, but it's become popular outside of that subculture because it looks uh, cute in a lot of people's eyes to do that. Um, but so this yeah, is like it. pills, needles, bloody knives, just kind of like more emo, like yeah. Yeah, mental health kind of stuff, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's um, very trendy to, to wear that kind of clothes. I saw a lot of it in Harajuku. Yeah, Harajuku. In fact, this, this shop is ACDC Rag. Um, I bought a lot of clothes from them before. I bought one Minheta... So the character on here, sorry, is Minheta Chan. There's a specific artist that started this movement online that made this character, and then it spread from there, and now it's a whole subculture. Um, Harajuku fashion scene is kind of dead. Because foreigners are Yeah, good. it's become super touristy and mainstream. So lots of people stopped dressing up because foreigners were going there and taking pictures and being obnoxious. Yeah, and but, so they're like, I don't want to dress up anymore. <laughs> but the subcultures that have have split off of standard Harajuku, like cutesy pastel fashion to kind of reject it. So you will see people wearing stuff like this occasionally, especially in like Omote Sambo, which is nearby. Um, but yeah, it's not as prevalent, but the shops are still all in Harajuku for this. Yeah, Tsugi, uh, so this is on the same concept. This is slightly different. Um, this is more still Minheta K, but this and this is more slightly Yami Kawaii, uh, which is a sort of super pastel, creepy, dark, I mean, Yami being dark, right? Or actually, sorry, no, Yami in this case is sick, um, which is this kanji here. Um, so there's all kinds of... This is describing all the different traits of a standard yummy kawaii outfit. Um, but yeah, bloody aesthetic, dark shoes, so essentially blacks and pastels mixed together. Um, so that's yeah, the that's the last slide that we have. So we were thinking about watching an episode of anime um, to close out for the night.